well, as far as I can tell, this is working exactly according to my plan. So I am content for now. Great. Um, crossbow still ready, but... Give me stealth with advantage, both of you. 15. Seven. And a 10. So, <laughs> Sir Vincent, as you are peering through the slats, you're kind of, you're trying to, trying to get a slightly better viewpoint. And as you sort of go to kind of move towards a, a yeah, like a couple of a boards that are together, you're trying to kind of pull them apart a little bit. And one of the nails does that. And this weird force figure in the rain right before it gets to the gate stops and then you can see the outline of it move towards the source of the sound towards the stables and it slowly begins to glide through the rain towards the stables towards your location i freeze hoping that these idiots at the gate will continue banging on the gate <laughs> So the question is now, do the idiots at the gate continue the assault in the gate and uh, in, in such sufficient force as to get the attention of this weird undead lord? I think it's probably very likely. Um, let's, let's roll that and see. 69 is a regular yes, so in fact, they do. It is moments, moments after that, that the, the banging on the gate resumes with renewed vigor, which causes the figure in the rain to stop its progress towards you, spin around and move with great rapidity to the gates. When it gets to the gates, you again, it's hard to see. It's just a weird outline, but it's as though... It's as though an appendage or perhaps a hand moves forward when it arrives at the uh, uh, inside of the gate and flicks the bar right out of the brackets. The bar goes flipping up, f hurling through the air and lands clattering in the center of the courtyard. And at that moment, the gates burst open. Two of the men that were banging on it actually come tumbling forward onto their onto their butts, basically. And at that moment, I'm not going to bother making a bunch of rolls for uh, the three men. I'm just going to assume that they fail their saving throws against this fear. Uh, but that wail immediately emanates again from that figure. And you can see the figure now just for a second, it materializes just for a second. And it's almost like it's almost like the ring wraiths in Lord of the Rings, where you see a tall, regal kind of knightly figure. There's no crown, but it's definitely some sort of armored knight. But for just a second, yeah, it's no longer this invisible figure in the rain. Now it is this strange silver blue glowing thing that howls. And you can see from your vantage point, especially, uh, Vincent, that its face turns skeletal as like uh, uh, horrible silver flames erupt into its skull-like eyes. And the three men who have just burst in, the three thugs, uh, they basically, you know, shit. <laughs> Their pants and go hightailing out as fast as they can. Now, the other two on the other side of the, the gate, you can see clearly standing there is Lord Wren and this other dark sort of cowled figure, which you must assume is, or you, you, you probably assume is the, uh, is the, this, this cult leader who you're, well, we'll say that you're familiar with this, this person. Um, so you can definitely recognize there's Wren. Now, do they fail their saves. Well, let's see. I'm just going to roll and see. We'll call Lord Wren here. He's, he's going to have some advantages on this one. I'll just give him that. He, he's okay. And the cult leader will give him this. Okay, well, <laughs> interestingly enough, the, uh, the cult leader, as this apparition turns towards him, and it basically roars this hideous wail, and the force of it blows the cowl back off of the cult leader's head, and he turns and hightails it back to his horse and gallops out of there. But Lord Wren is unaffected by this, and he he you know he he draws his weapon at this thing. Here's the thing: 
Is Lord Ren able to best this creature? I think there's a chance that he might. He might have some magic item or something. This creature isn't some super powerful ghost or anything. By the way, I'm just kind of making this up as I go along. I'm not using a particular creature for the monster manual or anything. Um, but does Lord Ren have the ability to make, to temporarily turn this thing? That's a question. Let's see. I kind of like that idea. I'm going to call it somewhat likely. And, ooh, and oh, it's 70. I've rolled a 77, which is above the chaos factor. So there's no random event. But the answer is yes. Okay, Lord Ren draws his sword, but from the other, well, with the other hand, he produces some sort of object, and you're not exactly sure what it is. It's hard to see through the slashing rain, but he holds the object aloft, and at that moment, the glowing apparition basically throws its arm up against its face as though it's in some sort of psychic or spiritual pain. And at that moment as well, you can see it vanish. And the rain, which was sort of illuminating its shape, uh, now the rain just falls in front of Lord Ren himself. And he stands panting, panting, holding up this object. It looks like some sort of holy symbol. It's hard to tell exactly. Holy symbol in one hand, sword in the other. And he he looks around, you know, his teeth bared in frustration, but uh, he scans the courtyard looking for any sort of uh, signs of this thing. He shouts back over his corner, uh, or over his shoulder rather, Come back, you cowards! Where are you going? I have bested it! Come back! I'm impressed. <laughs> yeah. Uh, am I still frightened? No. With the dissipation of the creature also comes the dissipation of the wailing and you regain your senses. Okay. Then, uh, uh, yeah, I've still got this fucking board in my hand. <laughs> uh, I'm going to, Use this opportunity to try and like get free of the of this building and go out into the rain. Okay, well that's not hard to do. You just you can basically go to the other side of the <clears throat> of the stable, kick open the doors, and emerge into the courtyard where Lord Ren immediately sees you. Obviously, what about you, Rat? I'm good here. I can cover like I I, I know Vincent well enough that that's what I assume he's gonna do. Which, because, you know, he's kind of an idiot. <laughs> uh, so, yeah, I will I will do the responsible thing and I will cover him. Okay. Um, right. As Vincent emerges into the courtyard, Ren spins and he kind of, he kind of grins with this, you know, malicious, uh, malicious smile. And he says, ah, there you are. Where's the other one? Where is the rat? Ren. Do you think that because you have bested my sentry, you can best the rest of my household guard? <laughs> this is a new side of Vincent, and I love it. I love it. <laughs> uh, you, well, confusion comes across his face for a second as he seems unsure how to respond to this. And he says, What are you talking about, knight? Night, you have come into my home. Be gone. <laughs> Take your gravel with you, and we will not pursue you any further. Well, this is sounding a bit like some sort of deception. I feel like <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> uh, It's a tall order, but what the hell? It's kind of fun. Let's see what happens. That's right. Take purse, <laughs> remove balls. Here we go. <laughs> so this is going to be, it's going to be tough to deceive him because of the situation and also the nature of his, his character. What's a good Deception number? opposed by insight. Sure. Advantage. Yeah, sure. Let's do that. You'll roll a deception. He'll roll insight with advantage. Okay. So yours is 10. Uh, Ooh, you're good at that. Insight. I'll give him, I'll give him a plus one on this. First one. Oh, well, there you go. So, unf oh, well, okay. <laughs> Unfortunately, he, 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 for a second, he's taken aback, but then he kind of shakes it off and says, I will not banter with the likes of you. Whatever. I, sh I shoot him. Okay. So <laughs> he's about to monologue. And <laughs> 
Well, um, I, I want to do- I'll do the monologuing here. <laughs> <laughs> You're just the DM. I am a player. Uh, I'm going to give him a perception with disadvantage right before this to see, because he did ask where you are. He's specifically looking for you. So I think it's appropriate that he'd be scanning the area. I'm going to give him perception with disadvantage to see if he uh, spots you. Did you roll your stealth? I did. I got a 15. 15. Okay. So yeah. did you roll that with, with advantage? Uh, yes, that was with advantage. Okay, all right. So I'm going to give him uh, perception with disadvantage to see if he spots you right before the moment of, of firing. I hope Fair he doesn't, because that's pretty good. I'm just going to give him a straight up d20 roll here. So first one <clears throat> is six. And second one is he does not see uh, you at so. all. He's completely focused on this mad liar in front of him. <laughs> <laughs> okay okay that's a hit his armor class is 15 so he's about to go on a big monologue when your crossbow flies buries itself in his chest doing how does this work you've got your sneak attack damage so it's eight and six so 14 is that right yeah boom well he had 35 hit points 35 <laughs> minus 40 is that 19 is my math right on that nope 21 it, 21 great <laughs> This is why we have players. Okay. <laughs> sure. <laughs> the only reason. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> See? <laughs> okay. You have, to wait. you have to wait for the internet to correct you yes. if you were doing this on your own. Right, ex exactly. Uh, the Okay, the, the crossbow bolt thuds into his chest. <laughs> he cries in pain. I think it's initiative. I'm pretty sure it's initiative. I'll give him a plus two. Ooh, he's on 21, so he is going first. Okay, let me whip up some quick stats for this dude, because of course, I'm making it up as I go along. What is he using? He's using uh, some sort of sword, some sort of big long sword, like a broadsword. Yeah, yeah. Sword and a holy symbol. Sword and a holy symbol is what he's got. Okay, that's good enough. All right, well, he... he cries out in pain he now notices you in the uh <laughs> giving a little wave like that and um yeah he ah, he <laughs> pulls back his sword and swings at vincent so here we go he closes the gap and comes at me he sure does he charges forward and rolls a 17 what's your armor class i'm guessing that's 16 good. so he will hit he's going to do oh it's a glancing blow with three damage so he basically uh, stumbles forward as he's charging in on the the on the mud that's uh just it's just sodden in here right because the rain is still slashing down ah! but he does manage to sort of clip you a little bit and draw first blood that was him which brings us to uh you i believe sir vincent that's great yeah yeah, I've got my glaive out. I'm going to swing it around and take a big swing at him. You will not bend the words with anyone, or you will be dead. <laughs> Suddenly, he's turning into Conan. <laughs> <laughs> well, 16. that is a hit. What's your damage? Uh, 7 plus 3 is 10 damage. Oh, well, that's pretty bad. That is pretty bad indeed. He is just hurting so you come in with that glaive and chop down it bites through his chainmail armor little links of it go scattering into the mud blood begins to mix with the falling rain he howls in pain and finally to close out the round from your vantage point in the stables all right i drop the crossbow kick open the shutter uh, <laughs> and do a big uh, acrobatic tumble while drawing my rapier. Oh my goodness. <clears throat> and, in the uh, rain. In the rain. Yeah, right, right. This is very dramatic stuff. There was obviously, I left the lantern so that it would backlight very nicely. <laughs> <laughs> uh, and 5, 10, 15, 20, 25, 30, no problem. Uh, I will get around behind him, uh, you know, land and roll. Uh, and stab him in the back with my rapier. Okay, so this is a, a, a cool thing. I'm not going to pull some sort of like Viking hat DM and say, well, if you roll, then you fall in your ass and you embarrass yourself and you're useless. What I'm going to say is if you make the roll, great. You can do this thing, get in your position and attack. If you fail the roll, great. You do the thing, get in position. That's your round. Fair? Fair. Cool. 
No problem like a god. You go spinning through the rain, landing like a cat, zipping around and attacking with, what is this, advantage? Or how does this work here? I don't know, D&D, can you tell? I, <laughs> I wouldn't have advantage, but I will get a, my sneak attack damage if I hit him. Okay. Because we're flanking. He spins around to try and meet you, but is he able to do it? Let us roll to hit. Okay, well, he is able to interpose his sword just at the right time to parry aside your attack. Okay, and now... I make it look like that was delivered. <laughs> <laughs> you're, you know, you're, you're very, I, let, I allow the repose. Yes, uh, you're, you're very yeah. generous to do that. <laughs> um, <clears throat> okay, so here's the thing. He is now outnumbered, wounded. Is there a chance that he is going to try... Oh, there we go. Okay, performance. I see. The performance yeah. is not. Great. He doesn't buy it. <laughs> <laughs> he's too. He's too. He's he's only interested in saving his own skin right now. Is right. really the issue. So I'm going to go back to the chart here and ask: Is he going to try and escape? I think it's pretty likely because he knows if he stays here, he's in big trouble. So I'm going to say very likely he's trying to escape, and I roll a 28, which is a regular yes. Okay, on his action. He sees that he's outnumbered. He's spun around to meet you. He knows he's in big trouble. Blood is flowing from many wounds. He is going to disengage and try and get out. So how does that work in D&D &D with the disengage? That's like a full round action or something to get. How does that work? You use your action to say that you're disengaging. And then you can move away without provoking attacks or opportunity. So okay. whatever his regular move is. Okay, move great. Out. So as a disengage, he wheels around you and makes it back out of the gate. He's clearly going to the horses. Okay, so he doesn't get there now because they're still uh, they're still a little too far away. But he is able to do a full disengage and get back towards his horses, which brings us to you, Sir Vincent. Uh, do I pursue or do I let him go? Uh, it's D and D. I'm going to pursue. <laughs> Okay, Sir Vincent splashes through the mud, charging up, and attacks him as he's trying to get to his horse. Do you hit him? Yeah, let's find out. Oh, 50. right on the button. What is your damage, please, with that glaive? Damage coming in is pretty good again. 11. Um, oh, well, as it turns out, that is all he had left. He is struggling, scrambling to get to the horses, and you come charging up and, in true knightly noble chivalric fashion, stab him in the back <laughs> and cut him down from behind. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> yeah, that's canon now. That's what chivalry is here. <laughs> In this world, sure. Uh, whatever world this is. He goes yeah. sprawling down into the mud. D your your glaive basically chopped deep into his spine. So even if he had survived this, he would be paralyzed for life. Oh, how awful. Blood begins to pour into the water and mud at the, the feet of his horse, which stands there, you know, uncaring. <laughs> <laughs> As the rain falls down, at oh. that moment, and this is just because I think it's kind of cool, at that moment you hear a sound from inside the tower, echoing again out of the windows. This time it is not a wail. It is a triumphant laugh. Okay, good. Uh, I'm out here with uh, the uncaring horse and the dead body. Uh, <laughs> What else do I see? The, the other guys that, that ran off, did they jump on their horses and take off? Or are they are they tromping through the mud? Are they, yeah, where, what's that? they left first, so they, they would have got on their horses and left. But let's see if you can see the, the cult leader. Let's see, maybe you catch a glimpse of him. Let's give a perception. That's what I want. <clears throat> uh, it has to be disadvantage again because of the, the rain. And okay. he's had some time to, to oh, escape. Oh, shit, no, don't, don't look at that one. Don't look at that one. <gasps> Okay, well, there's one. <laughs> yeah, okay. Unfortunately, oh, yeah. if e even if there was tracks to follow, the, they've been washed away completely. He has made his escape. But Lord Wren lies sprawled and dead in front of you. Yeah, so we've got, I got a body, one horse. Uh, I'm going to go through his pockets. Okay, there's stuff. He's got money. I don't know. Uh, let's see. Uh, he's got... 
How yeah. much? He's got uh, 18 gold pieces in his pocket. He's obviously Wrong. got I his... I have 18 gold pieces. <laughs> He's uh, he's got his longsword. He's got this holy symbol. Is this a symbol that he knows? Is this a, a symbol of the cult, which would show that Lord Ren was working with the cult? I really like that idea. Let's find out. I'm gonna I'm gonna call that very likely. Um, the answer is forty, so the answer is yes. The holy symbol that he has, you recognize it immediately. It is a symbol of the cult that is opposed to your god. So it looks like. For whatever reason, Lord Wren, well, obviously was in possession of it, but <clears throat> as to what that means, of course, that's up to you to interpret. Uh, I'd like to destroy it. Okay. Um, it's made of uh, it's made of metal, so it could be, it could be bent, it could be melted down, it could be hacked into pieces. How do you propose to destroy it? Yeah, that's uh, that's what I'm thinking. You know, if we're out here in the mud, there's maybe a stone, and I can sure. use the butt end of my glaive and. Okay. Ceremoniously, <laughs> ceremoniously destroy it. Ceremoniously destroy it. Great. Okay. Well, it doesn't take much to do it. Um, it is destroyed. Do you, do you think maybe the tower might be concerned? No. Okay. Good. No. No. Bash. Do your thing. Do your thing. <laughs> <laughs> I don't like me getting away. Um, <laughs> I will. Yeah. Just keep an eye out. Uh, we're near the gate, right? Uh, to the, the to the compound. Yes. So <clears throat> my instinct, I think, would be to to go to a place where there's a bit of cover uh, and 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 look out into the rain, making sure that while uh, while this consecration desecration, depending on your perspective, uh, while that's happening, I'm just keeping an eye out. Okay. Uh, you can uh, also. I don't get any closer to the tower. That. Okay. So you're you're looking out. Uh, like past the retreating men, is that is that correct? Yeah. So just making sure none of them are coming back, and particularly that cult leader <clears throat> guy. Um, sure. Making sure he's not coming back. He uh, definitely is not coming back with that horrible failed saving throw. So yeah, you don't um, <laughs> you don't <laughs> you don't see any sign of them now. Whether he will come back later with more men, who can say? But for the moment, you have gained yourself a bit of a reprieve, and at that moment as well. Again, just because I think it's cool and I want to leave things off with some sort of interesting hook to get them back in. They're free to ignore it if they want. There is, again, sort of a, a, a low laughter that emanates from the tower, but then you hear words. Both of you hear words. Words that carry through on the rain itself and sort of hijack on the wind as the words make their way to your ears. It's as though someone is whispering right beside you, even though you know it's coming from the tower. And the, the, the words are, come and claim your reward for your loyalty. This sounds trustworthy. I will. Uh, uh, what did you just roll? An insight? insight. <laughs> I am suspicious. Rat has been in the play where the the evil uh, overlord offers just reward uh, for loyalty, which turns out to, of course, be execution. So. Right. Well, drawing upon your memory of that play that you're in, you recall that there was two endings written. One, <clears throat> one ending was where uh, it, it was the obvious trap and haha the main character was gullible and the moral of the story was if you believe such things then you get what you deserve kind of thing but the other ending was um if you have faith in your betters it was written by a noble obviously if you have faith in your betters regardless of their of their current station if you have faith in the in the uh, feudal system there are always rewards <laughs> <clears throat> well and i also know that uh, the sim the symbol that repelled it was the symbol of my my enemy, my foe. So I'm I'm good with this. I'm going to slap the horse on the ass and get it the hell out of here. And I'm going to drag the body of Lord Wren in with me uh, through the rain to offer up to this uh, <laughs> this being. Uh, you know. <laughs> okay. So. Is this sort of weird ghostly apparition, is it interested in some sort of further weird sacrifice? 
Uh, I don't. I don't think so. I don't think that's in its interest. I think it. I think it was actually legitimately being honest when it said, "Come and claim your reward." But let's see. Is it going to be interested in some sort of weird sacrifice that Sebastian is proposing? I think it's very unlikely. Let's see here. That gives us a forty-five percent chance. And ninety-nine is an extreme no. Interesting. Okay, so you drag the body towards the tower. <clears throat> I'm just filling in the rest of my character sheet here. Lawful good. <laughs> <laughs> you you drag the body towards the tower, and as you get towards the open doors, there is another sound. And again, it's it's more words, but it's also it's words that carry an emotion with it, and you're struck more by the emotion than the words. But the words are "Keep that filth out of my home." Its shell is empty. I care not. And I will, as is the case in this campaign, turn around and undo what I just did. <laughs> drag the thing back outside. <laughs> Roll it down the hill. <laughs> hey, it's what, it's what the dice rolled, man. This is, I'm, yeah. it's all random. It's random. <laughs> Okay, uh, you're standing at the at the at the at the entrance to the tower, and there is a light, a, a sort of again this weird silvery blue light, very very faint that begins to sort of emanate from inside the tower, and you hear the word "Come, enter, claim your reward for your loyalty." Yeah, yeah, I'll uh, I'll approach the tower, but I'm not going in. Okay. <clears throat> but I, I don't want to get too far away from from Vincent. I've got his back, but but I yeah I feel like if the reward is for loyalty and I don't have any, then I'm going to stay here. <laughs> <laughs> okay. So here's the thing. I feel like this scene has been finished now. It was explore um, the ruin. We didn't get there because the dice told a different story. But this scene is definitely ended now. We know uh, in terms of our lists that the Lord of Ren is now dead. However, the cult leader and the the uh, other men escaped. So I'm going to add the cult. I will call him a cult leader. The cult uh, priest, we'll call him. I'm going to add him as an NPC. So we look at this, the threads, uh, protect the tome. It's still there. Escape Lord Wren. That is resolved. So we can cross that one off the list. Explore the real ruin is still open, but we're, we're going to add the thread investigate the dead Lord. We'll call it. So right now the new scene would be at the precipice of the tower. But the question is, is this scene interrupted or altered? And, and we look at our chaos factor. I think our chaos factor in this case is going to go, uh, it's going to go up again because, um, you know, that was, Things were largely out of the player's control, uh, even though they seized a little bit of control at the time. So I'm going to roll d10 against the chaos factor, and I get a 7. Now, a 7 means that we have an altered scene. The scene is they're they're trying to communicate with this dead lord, but it's altered. You know what I think that means? I think something interferes. I think there's something else going on in the tower, and this is how we're going to play that out. Uh, so you're standing there at the tower with the body, with the, with the corpse of Lord Wren. This voice has just uh, said these words to you. Rat, you're, you're a few paces back sort of looking at this. Um, Again, as I said, there's this silvery blue light that comes from the inside of the tower and you get a sense of beckoning, right? There's this, again, it's this emotion rather than words. But then all of a sudden, all of a sudden, the light goes out. This weird silvery light goes out. The The words and the emotions, it's like they're, it's like someone slammed a gate on them. They just vanish. And all you hear and sense is the falling of the rain. Did the doors close at all? No, the doors are still open. Gonna okay, walk on in. Okay, you walk on in. And this will take us into the tower itself to find out what's going on. Who is this strange spectral figure? And why did the figure suddenly stop? Um, and that is where we're going to suddenly stop, because I think that's a good point to stop this for now. I just wanted to give you a sense of how this whole thing works. Uh, if you dig this, if you like this, I can certainly continue this later with the boys. Uh, you let me know in the comments below if this was useful for you. And other than that, uh, we'll, we'll see you next time. Thank you.